Hello, anyone out there? <laughs> this is a live feed. The Peoria Riverfront Museum has given me control. If you're wondering who I am and what's going on, my name is John Cardoni. I'm a guitarist from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, originally from the central Illinois area. Hey, we got one viewer so far. Test, one, two, three. Hey everyone joining us. My name is John Cardoni, welcome. I have taken over control of the Peoria Riverfront Museum's Facebook page. Welcome. It's the year of the guitar, so I've been told. And so they invited me to uh, do a little live stream for you. I'll talk about this here guitar here, maybe play some tunes for you. So we're getting a few views up right now, half dozen or so. So I might vamp for a minute or two, banter until there's a couple more. I hope everyone's doing well. Make sure this thing's in tune here. I had to rearrange where I was going to do this because I realized the backdrop I was planning on did not work with the sun coming through the windows. It made me look like I had a halo and that looked awful, especially with this head. So let's just get started. I'm going to play a little music and then talk a little bit. So here we are. <laughs> This sounds all right. I'm sure most of you will probably recognize this tune. Hey, hey, I'm waving back at some of y'all. So for those just joining this stream, my name is John Cardoni. I'm a guitarist from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, so you might be wondering why the Peoria Riverfront Museum has asked me to play today for you for their Music Monday 
in connection with the, uh, the Year of the Guitar. Looks like they have a really cool guitar exhibit coming later this year. Um, so I grew up in, well, actually I was born in Columbus, Indiana. So I'm a Midwesterner at heart, but moved to the central Illinois area. Went to high school in Bloomington Normal. And in high school started to uh, play in a band, doing gigs. Uh, not on guitar though, as a trombone player. That was actually my first instrument. And so a lot of those, you know, gigs, you know, brought me over to Peoria and had a couple like different experiences and, you know, fun little like memories like playing in Peoria. I think, um, oh, I was just thinking about this earlier today. Wow. We, uh, the band I used to be in in high school called Blue Tone Groove. That was the band I played in, play trombone. We were doing a battle of the bands that was taking place in Peoria at a couple different venues, clubs. I think the one that we played at was called the Millennium Club or Millennia Club. I don't even think it's there anymore. But, um, so we were in this contest, this battle of the band, and I think we won the first night and you know you, you do a couple rounds I think the second round one of our band members our band leader if I'm not mistaken couldn't even make that night he was out of town so we thought well we'll just record ourselves we'll record our set for like 20 minutes and you know bring the tape over to the club and they'll just play it you know over the speakers you know they have a projection you know projector screen so you know you're at this battle of the bands in a club and you have you know a couple bands playing and then we're supposed to go on but they just play a video of us for you know 20 minutes you know not in person although a couple of us did go to watch it even though we weren't playing and we ended up still winning that night funny enough like we didn't even play in person and we won that night of the battle of the bands i don't think we actually I can't remember at now if we actually won the entire thing or not i'm not sure so that's one of the uh, few Peoria memories I've had, <laughs> and this would have been late 90s, so as I said, you know, as a high schooler, went to Normal West High School, shout out to Normal West, Wildcat at heart. <laughs> so yeah, we uh, that band, we had to make our way out to Peoria a couple times for, you know, playing gigs in the late 90s, and then a couple other bands would out to the Peoria area in the early 2000s so <laughs> hey we get a couple more listeners hello everyone I have taken over control of the museum's Facebook stream <laughs> see my in-laws are watching howdy they're living up in uh, Bloomington Illinois and thank you uh, uh, Vero I believe with some of the clapping emojis. So why don't I start off with talking about this guitar I'm playing. So I thought I'd choose this Ibanez for today's Music Monday. It is an AS200 is the model number, and I'm pretty sure this is from 1980. So that makes it a 40-year-old guitar. And it's kind of a, my, you know, one I always go back to. It's pretty versatile. It's a great jazz guitar. It's pretty cool for like you know, playing rock and blues. Maybe I'll try to play some blues later on today for you. Um, but yeah, these this was made in Japan, like most Ibanez. I think all Ibanez are made in Japan. AS200, pretty cool, like kind of antique violin finish is what they call it. Very pretty, like a combination of pearl and abalone inlays. We'll get a little close up. They're kind of cool. Hopefully, this will. Yeah. And it's a workhorse. It's been through the ringer a couple times. Lots of nicks and everywhere. But got a nice uh, maple top, mahogany neck, and a ebony fingerboard. And you know, a lot of people when you see like you know guitars like the wood that they're made out of, especially the wood on the fingerboard, can make a huge difference. Um, not just from the craftsmanship of, you know, whoever's, you know, cutting it, sanding it down, but the, there's different tonalities of wood too. So this is a pretty, like, dark, warm-sounding guitar. 
and a lot of that's coming from the the ebony fingerboard and you can tell like ebony when you look up close it's just a very very smooth like you can hardly see any of the grains whereas a lot of other guitars uh, you know this one the Stratocaster has rosewood on here they probably look pretty close but you can even yeah you can see the difference rosewood you can see more of the grains that's kind of a almost like the default wood for fingerboards and then sometimes you'll see uh, like maple fingerboards as well. And maple's like very bright and snappy and poppy, which is usually you'll find that on Telecasters mostly. So this guitar said I works well with jazz and that arrangement I did of yesterday by the Beatles, I think that's like the first solo guitar arrangement I ever tried putting together and came from a arrangement I was given in undergrad at Milliken University is where I went for college first. And so I kind of took that as a basis and kind of worked around with it. Had a little flubs here and there, still trying to get a little warmed up, even though it's already <laughs> five o'clock in the afternoon here. So given I had like the Central Illinois connection, even though I don't live there anymore, I'm here in Nashville and so I thought I'd do a tune by a guitarist who's synonymous with Nashville. Uh, he's no longer with us these days, but Chet Atkins. And Chet Atkins was a great guitar player um, and a very successful music producer as well. Uh, it's because of Chet Atkins that we have that term, you know, the Nashville sound, which you know was coined for like the sound of the country music that was being recorded here in Nashville from about the late 50s into the 70s when he had this kind of a little bit more of a polished, almost crooner-esque sort of country sound with you'd have a lot of background singers and string sections in the recordings. So Chet Atkins was one of the architects of that Nashville sound. But like I said, he was also an excellent guitar player and picker. So I'm gonna try to play a tune that he made famous called Windy and Warm. Even though he didn't write it, it was written by a guy named uh, John Loudermilk, if I'm not mistaken. But this is uh, Windy and Warm, as played with, by Chet Atkins. Uh, hopefully you can hear the guitar pretty well. Yeah. So normally, Chet's thing was he always used a thumb pick, which I think I have a thumb pick around here. A thumb pick. I suck at using the thumb pick. So I'm not going to use the thumb pick. I'm just going to use the thumb. Turn that off. Yeah. Okay. So this is windy and warm.
Got some windy and warm. Ooh, had a little uh, hiccup in there in the middle. <laughs> so that's uh, pretty, it can be a very complicated technique on the guitar that a lot of people usually refer to as Travis picking, which uh, is named after Merle Travis, another kind of a Nashvilleian, old school uh, cowboy country player back in the day. And like I said, usually they use a thumb pick. That's the traditional way. I never learned playing with a thumb pick. So I just try to get by just with using the thumb sans pick. But Travis picking is mainly a combination of having a repeated bass pattern played by your thumb and the individual fingers are su supplying like the melodic material in harmony as well. So it's kind of the equivalent of like stride piano. Like in stride piano, the left hand's doing the a lot of the, the bouncing motions in the bass line and the right hand's doing all the melodic stuff. So it's kind of doing all that in one hand with the, between the thumb and the fingers. So it's not my specialty per se, but I'd like to dive into that end of the pool every once in a while. So that was Windy and Warm by the uh, late great Chet Atkins from here in Nashville, Tennessee. So for those who have joined us, Hey, how you doing? My name is John Cardoni. I definitely look a little different than the little uh, advertisement banner for this uh, live stream here on Music Mondays. A little less hair than uh, that picture shows. <laughs> so I'm talking about this uh, guitar that I'm playing, this Ibanez AS200. And so this style of the guitar. Let's talk about you know, like the body shape and the style. This would be considered a semi-hollow body, meaning that it's not completely hollow within the body. There's this like piece of wood that goes down the center. Thus, you know, you can have these pickups in there, um, but you have like the F holes as you would like a traditional violin or viola. So with semi-hollow bodies, like I said, it's a pretty thin guitar too. And for a lot of people, they might see this type of guitar and think, well, it kind of looks like a Gibson 335, and that's kind of exactly what it's based off of, is a Gibson 335. Um, sometimes, like, that traditional look would be, you know, with a very bright cherry red finish, like, as played by George Harrison of the Beatles. He kind of made that guitar um, very well known. But Eric Clapton played 335s, but a lot of jazzers played 335s, too. So, as I said, this is pretty versatile and what you can do with it and um because it's semi hollow body you get a lot of the resonating features as you would from any sort of regular like jazz you know guitar full hollow body or a lot of acoustic guitars with full hollow body um and so i got this guitar early 2000s when i was in college at millican and um, back then I was buying all my gear on eBay and I just happened to see that there's this guitar shop up in Chicago that had this posted on eBay. Um, and so I've been looking for this exact same type of guitar, this exact model, not, necess not necessarily the year, but looking for this, you know, Ibanez Ace 200 and happened to find it listed on eBay. And I told my uh, roommates who we're all in jazz band together, like, Tell Raymond I'm gonna gonna be late if I'll even make it at all. And so I you know I'm going to buy a new guitar. So I even though they had the listing on eBay, I called the uh, guitar shop, figured out which guitar shop I was selling it. Called them, I told them, I live in Decatur. I'm gonna drive up there tonight before you close, I'm gonna buy this guitar. I'm like, okay, we'll hold it for for you. So for those who may not know, from Decatur up to get into the Chicago area, that's a about three hours, so drove three hours up there, dropped, I don't know, 1200 to get this guy. It was in an old crappy case too, like a surprise it survived and got three hours back, got back to it. <laughs> I did miss a jazz band rehearsal though. I definitely missed it. And to answer a question, are you left-handed or is the video mirrored? It must be mirrored then. I am a right-handed player. So, <laughs> just to answer that question, thank you for watching. So yeah, so I picked this guitar up early 2000s, probably 2003 is 
what I'm guessing, 2003. And it's been with me ever since, the oldest guitar that I have, years wise. And so what made me very interested in this specific guitar versus just going for the more known Gibson 335 was I was a huge John Schofield fan. John Schofield. There he is. So he's a great jazz guitarist. Um, I was a big fan of his, still am, um, but kind of a, uh, I guess you would call it, I would have been a stand of his back then. And he played this type of guitar. He's well known for it. So well known that eventually Ibanez, they made this John Schofield model. So that's usually what you see these days for sale. It looks just like this, but it's the Schofield model. Um, so yeah, I was a big fan of his. I like, you know, I was, I was buying all the pedals that he used, like anything from a, these early 80s Ibanez 9 series pedals that he tended to use. So I was decking out my pedal board with all his pedals. And eventually I realized like, you need to stop trying to sound and play like Schofield and just try to do, do your own thing. So I considered maybe doing something a la Schofield-ish, but I think it would be kind of a useless to try to like sound like him and, and play like him. But And he's not super well known for anything. Like sometimes jazz guitarists, they might be known for like, oh, he's, you know, on this recording, you know, um, you know he's from the same generation of guitar players who kind of came up in New York scene, late 70s into the 80s. Um, Schofield actually played with Miles Davis in the 80s. Like he was one of his guitars for a while, along with like Mike Stern, who's an also a great guitar player as well. But, so I mentioned earlier that this works great in a variety of styles. So I thought I'd maybe just let this sing a little bit, see what happens. So. Thank you. 
Oh, some blues right there. Here, pardon me. <laughs> I wanted to make sure, I check the time, don't go too long. If anyone who's watching has any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer anything. As we said, uh, this is the Music Mondays for the Peoria Riverfront Museum, Year of the Guitar. Hey, thank you, Kathy, who said beautiful. Thank you. It looks like the, Peoria's, uh, the museum's going to have a very cool exhibit on the guitar coming up. You know, I was checking out some of the photos online. It looks pretty awesome. Hopefully I can make it over there once we're in normal times. You know. Rather this uh, year 2020 be remembered as the year of the guitar versus anything else. Cause, uh, <laughs> um, I did want to thank uh, Heather and Barb for inviting me to do this. Um, shout out to both of you. And a um, kind of how my name even got thrown out there was a former um, schoolmate of my wife's, uh, Anne Marie, who, um, when they were both in grad school, like I believe she's in, I don't know if she works at the museum, but through her, she passed along my name, knowing that I'm a guitar player. So thank you, Anne Marie. Um, I know there is a very, just to get serious for a second, a pretty bad shooting out there by the riverfront in Peoria. So I hope anyone who was involved in that is okay and, you know, sound like an awful thing. Hopefully there, last I heard, there were no deaths, so at least that's a small silver lining. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that since that's probably right nearby where the museum's at. So I um, wanted to say, yes, thank you for this, the year of the guitar. Come out to the museum when you can. My name is John Cardoni. As I said, uh, Hey, we have 17 people watching right now. Hey, number 18. Who's in, whoever is number 18, hello. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> um, I want to make sure this doesn't go too long. Okay, we're only about at the 30-minute mark, so that's not too bad. I can try to take a request if anyone has a request. I did a little uh, solo jazz on this Ibanez guitar and some... Uh, Chet Atkins picking on Windy and Warm. I apologize for the very bland background. We're actually in the middle of packing about to move. And uh, I was planning to have this look the other way. This was my pant plan backdrop. And as you can see, it looks like I'm um, descending down from heaven right now, which is not great. So I had to do a quick 180 and bring it back over here. So, um, anyone interested? I am playing through a Fender Deluxe Reverb. It's a reissue. It's a reissue of their 65 model Fender Deluxe. And I'm using a couple pedals, like when well, I was just kind of jamming out on the blues there, using a couple uh, variety of overdrive pedals, just distortion pedals. I like the the uh, J Rocket Archer Icon. The uh, Analog Man Prince of Tone, still on the waiting list for their King of Tone, but using the Prince of Tone right now. <laughs> and how about, I'll play a little bit more on this Ibanez AS200 for you. I should say one thing that's kind of awesome about this guitar for you. Hey, thank you, John. Um, this has a funky little extra switch here that I literally just today learned what it was even called, was, uh, what it even does. It's called a tritone switch, I think is what they called it. Found some old advertisements for this guitar in catalogs. And it's a weird thing. You know, with guitars, electric guitars, there's 
humbucker pickups, which usually when, when they kind of look like a soap bar, that's a humbucker, you can tell right away. Single coils are thinner. But with this one humbucker that's close to the neck, this tritone switch uh, moves it to a single coil. You may not hear much of a difference here, but then it goes into like a reverse phase. Which is really weird sounding. I never have found a use for it. So it's basically just a volume difference. But. But I'll do a, one more tune before we say goodbye. About time for me to make dinner too. Well, thanks everyone. Yes, indeed. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful tune. I don't know why I decided to jump into that. I was only planning to do a few tunes, but that came to mind, so I thought I'd go ahead and play the Ushoka Farewell. Um, thank you for everyone.
for watching. This has been a Music Monday at the, for the Peoria Riverfront Museum, their year of the guitar. My name is John Cardoni. It's been a pleasure to play a few things for you. Hope it sounded all right in here. As I said, I had a little last minute impromptu workaround for uh, <laughs> where I was going to do this. <laughs> so thanks again. I'm going to sign off. You all have a lovely evening. Stay safe out there. Thanks so much.